Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon, my colleagues. And as uh, well as the administration is here and the teachers in the audience, thank you very much for being here. And uh, all parents and children are welcome to be part of this process. At the same time, we have some work to do. As I said in the beginning, when I first came on the board, we're planning for the future, positive future. So I'll just that. As much as possible, we're going to move in that direction. And I want to bring us to order, if I may. And what I'd like to do is have us do the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank Now, if I may, um, address us to the adoption of the budget. I mean, the budget. <laughs> adoption of the agenda. And before we do that, uh, I want to add that we're removing uh, item number C, three and four. Our uh, administrator at large uh, has resigned her position and relocated to the to another area. The name of the individual is Tara That's on page uh, 306. Then I'm going to uh, report. Oh, adopt the agenda. Okay, maybe we adopt the agenda. I'll move the agenda, but the note is Yeah. Okay. And there's uh, a motion to adopt the agenda. Second. 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 Nathan is not, not with us uh, this evening, and uh, I know his heart and his soul is with us, but at the same time, our prayers are with him. Thank you very much. Okay, at a closed session, I, we have one report to give. We gave direction to the administration to, uh, to uh, meet as negotiators and um, and we we'll move forward on that on that uh, task that we already established a month ago, and we're going forward right now. So that would be the, be the uh, on salary. Okay. Now we're going to go into the uh, next item, which is uh, public hearing, and uh, that will go to personnel. No, a public hearing. Right. Okay, we're opening a public hearing on the item called <coughs> Initial Proposal for CSTC to include Article 10, Employee Evaluation Procedures, and Article 15 for salary. Okay, public. Any comments from the public? So open the public uh, hearing. And I don't have any comments or any concerns, okay. Let's, uh, I will be closing the public hearing on said item. Okay. So close. I'm asking for, we're going to be doing communications and presentations to <coughs> acknowledge this at this point as number one. I call it eight. Okay, good evening, uh, Mr. President, 
for a productive audience. Uh, at this time, it is my pleasure to acknowledge one of our side principals, um, Catherine Rondeau, um, principal Lorewood, that uh, she had to move uh, with her husband's uh, personal, uh, personal problems. But however, restorative justice, a partner from Marina, is wanted to recognize her for the implementation of the restorative justice program in Lorewood, school-wide, uh, with a Spring success, every single classroom with the uh, agreement in place, and every single teacher embracing the program. And uh, they brought uh, a target. Kathleen Rondo, thank you for your dedication to restorative <coughs> justice as a catalyst for social change at Lorewood Elementary. Uh, she is not here with us, but I would like to call the citizens over internet so you can give her the expression. <laughs> Another acknowledgement I think very important for the community and extremely is uh, related. Uh, with our homeless and now foster youth, and I would like to call the assistant superintendent Jerry Stratton. Ms. Cheryl Kameny, would you please come forward? <laughs> I need to get my strike. <laughs> You're looking at one super lady here, and I want to tell you a little bit about her, and I will read uh, a letter that we have addressed to Ms. Kameny, our Homeless Liaison Coordinator. Ms. Cheryl Kameny of Salinas City Elementary School District, Homeless Liaison, is commended for her extraordinary dedication to all needy members of our community. As Homeless Liaison, Cheryl started the Family Resource Center where needy families can come to receive food, clothing, and even toys. An example of how far out of her way Cheryl goes to assist community members is cataloged in a recent letter we received. A grandmother and her two grandkids who attend school in our district were homeless and sleeping in a pickup in the Target parking lot. The matriarch was considering turning the kids over to CPS for foster placement as her resources were exhausted. Cheryl told her, don't you even think about that. You come over to the Family Resource Center and we'll help you. Family is important. Cheryl helped stabilize the family, got them into lodging, coordinated food and bathing facilities, and kept this family unit intact. Cheryl's intervention for this grandmother and her two grandchildren made a huge difference in their lives. She moved this family from despair to stability to hope. The two grandchildren now have excellent attendance at Lincoln School, both have received good grades, and the family has remained together. Cheryl made a huge difference for this family, just as she greets and treats the other 6,000 homeless students throughout the county, of whom 2,800 attend our school district. Cheryl, thank you, and God bless you. Wonderful work. <laughs> thank you. from meeting the homeless folks at Target, and it felt like a cattle call. I would get all kinds of volunteers from different churches and so forth, and we'd set up, you know, five to ten families at a time, and they'd have a budget, come back, and get checked out. But it was so impersonal, and, and I didn't like it at all, and then it was really her idea when the recession really was going to hit that a whole crew of you guys came over and said, we want you to get out of what you're doing right now. Um, um, as far as bilingual resource teacher, and we want you to start the Family Resource Center so that it's centralized. People can come there, the kids can play while you do the paperwork, it's near a bus stop, it's near every access to transportation throughout town, and I was just the worker bee, but she was the queen bee, and it was her innovation, and I think that's the reason why that our numbers have 
gone up to 2,850 as of just last week. It got certified and sent up to a CDE is because I'm just one of the worker bees amongst the whole school district. Certificate and classify the community, the support of administrators and board and so forth, and I just appreciate all of that. And then just one plug, this Saturday we're putting on a life skills workshop for about 55 homeless women coming from the two shelters and then transitional housing and their children, about 65 of them, they'll have a kids camp simultaneously and Monica and all, Lori and all kinds of people have helped me put the, to put this on but they'll be um, getting an email, a library card and all information about the libraries, going into Google Docs to work on their resume and cover letter and, uh, and Monica bless you for showing me that that is even an option and we'll have lots of adults throughout the community, Heal College, um, Pebble Beach Company, um, United Way and three or four different churches, all kinds of volunteers are going to help with the women in their life skills training while the kids are having fun at a, a kids camp. So I just, if you're invited, I mean you're invited, if you want to come and help, we'd love to have any kind of help that we can get and thank you guys for all your support. Thank you. Good evening, board and everyone. Um, uh, SETC is again asking when the results from the survey will be available. I asked last time. They are available now. They are available here. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and um, I wanted to talk a little bit about Common Core um, implementation. Um, teachers uh, that I've talked to, and I've talked to quite a, quite a few, um, are not really prepared to teach Common Core standards. Uh, there will be no professional development day for us until the middle of September. Uh, this year we did a um, partial implementation, but next year will be the full implementation year and um, teachers are not feeling as if they are ready for this. Um, they feel that there's a lack of training, there's a lack of materials, um, and the district may be doing something to get more training, more materials, but they have not um, inform teachers of it, so we don't really, we're sort of in the dark as to what's going on. And um, we're also, con they're also concerned about <coughs> the introduction uh, of so many different <coughs> programs, as you <coughs> see through the agenda tonight, without um, really a clarity as to what works for the classroom for both students and teachers. Um, there's been so much being put on us with um, PBIS and uh, restorative justice, those things that are important cu um, cultural types of things and you know, behavior types of things, but then we have also at this very same time when that's being all implemented, we have Common Core and we're not feeling as if we're we're ready for it and it's a real concern. I don't think teachers were concerned before because we felt like this year we would be getting more um, clarification, but um, teachers are not feeling like that's the case. I'd also like to talk a little bit about technology. Um, I'm, teachers have been asking me about, with most of them, or a lot of teachers, if they're getting new computers because their others are, have gotten old, they're getting the new air books and they want to um, be clear as to whether there will be, um, I don't know, the dongles, the wires, the accessories, whatever it's needed to connect um, the air books to our projectors. And not only from day one of school, but before school because we all, we go into our classrooms before school um, and we want to know that we're going to be ready for that first day of school with our projectors. Um, we also want to be sure that we're able to print from our new computers before school starts because a lot of, um, a lot of us are, collect, are um, making up forms, making up lesson plans, whatever that we want to be um, able to print right from the beginning. Uh, teachers have talked about their, their classroom projectors that they use for their computers. Um, some of them are now nine plus years old and um, the, there's concerns and, and questions about what the plans are for replacement of those. I know that me, mine personally, I'm at Veranda Meadows, so my projector is nine years old. Um, it needs a new bulb. I've asked her in the last couple of years for a new bulb and, you know, for whatever reason, it, it doesn't have a new bulb and it's really difficult to see. I have to make sure all the lights are off in the classroom, those kinds of things. And I'm sure I'm not the only one. So, um, uh, you know, these are concerns that teachers are bring bring to me. We also um, are wondering if there's been a survey done of the air book trainings that have been done. Um, people are wondering, are they really necessary? Um, most or a lot of teachers feel pretty confident in using uh, their um, laptop and. Um, they don't feel as if they want to uh, do a two-hour training to, in order to receive such a valuable piece of equipment and a piece of equipment that is um, required now for a job. We can't even take roles without without a laptop. So um, these are all questions that the teachers have been relaying to me, and I wanted to relay them to the board for you to get some answers. They did notice this. Thank you. Thank you. CAC8 in the house. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm Joe Sanchez, I'm the chapter president of CAC8. I represent custodians, uh, 
secretaries, clerks, uh, drivers, uh, maintenance. And I'm here to thank uh, Jerry and Terry Ryan for, for getting the um, classified staff being trained for custodians. And we're having bargaining unit people doing the work, did substitutes. Uh, it's, thank you again, Terry Ryan. I really appreciate it. Another thing I would like to thank you also for is that Monterey Car School, the weed was just climbing up like crazy. And Terry and Jerry allowed 10 custodians to come down to the site on a weekend. And now it looks, it looks great. Again, thank you, Jerry and Terry. I really appreciate that. And I'm pretty sure the parents of Monterey Car School, the residents, appreciate that as well. Okay. Also, uh, I would also like to thank Mr. Daniel Lee today. I mean, Daniel Lee, thank you very much mm -hmm. for, I called him today. He's a principal at University Park. I called him today because I had a little issue about breaks. And I texted him and he went and took care of it and making sure that they're following the contract. Again, thank you, Daniel Lee. So again, thank you, school board, for allowing us to speak here today and enjoy. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Substitute teachers. Done. Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah. Um, okay. So the next item. The next item is the board members. I'm going to go from my left. Oh, superintendent. I don't want to skip. No. The board of education. I would like to announce. It's a happy season for Salina City. After nine years, we open summer programs district-wide again. So we have this time for general uh, population, students who are behind grade level. Three school sites open, <coughs> and uh, we're serving right now 600 students and around um, 20, how many teachers we've hired? So um, it has been a long time that districts have been serving students who are behind, and this is a good uh, year. In addition, the uh, minor programs are serving around 100 students, and also they began uh, this week. So uh, our kids are receiving supplemental instruction during summertime. Thank you. questions about this program or that program or why our computers aren't here and I have to respond uh, my job is to forward these uh, requests to the superintendent and I've gotten a few of those and uh, please if you do have a question if you don't get a response uh, if the principal sends emails and saying, you know, I need my computers here, and, and she gets no response. She needs to, or he, or she, whoever it is, needs to let me know, or any of the board members, and it's our job to let the superintendent know, because somebody's not uh, following protocol. Somebody's not, you know, answering their questions. So anyway, uh, I just want to make that clear to the public. If you have a question, if you're not getting a response, but you know, from one of the directors or from maintenance or wherever, uh, ask us, and we'll get. The, uh, I came in. Uh, Dr. Luce and I had a, a conversation on Friday, and I asked him about three or four of these things. He said, "I've not heard of them. You know, if I've heard of them, I just solved the problem." Well, uh, please. You know, let us know so he can work on it. You know, because uh, so far he's not been, uh, I guess he's been in the dark in a lot of stuff. And, and that makes everybody unhappy. It makes me unhappy. You know, so 
Anyway, I just wanted to say, um, please, keep the communications coming, and I'm going to be out of town for a month. I'll be gone. Yeah. Uh, so you direct yours to <laughs> somebody else. <laughs> 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 Okay. Uh, just, I just would just like to ask um, Mrs. Sanders and maybe Monica, if you could kind of go over just a little quickly of what, what the Common Core classes that have been offered, what's going to be offered this summer, because by the time we get back in August, some people might not know what has been offered. Because I know that you've been working really hard in helping people take courses. Um, so this summer and in this past year, because I know you've been working hard and I know lots of supplies have been given out. Right, right, right. And Monica can address technology because our technology is... There's some kind of... Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, I'm loud anyway. I don't need to... <laughs> so, um, we have, uh, in the previous years, did some sort of mass overview training. Um, introduction to math, common core, the instructional shifts in English language arts. And this year we fo focused on some specific methodologies. One is with the California Reading and Literature Project, um, RALI, which is Results, Academic Language, and Literacy Instruction. We have had four institutes. We had one again in June. After school ended, teachers were compensated for their four days of attending. We had 35 teachers attend. Um, Monica then can talk a little bit about the Tech University. We've also really, we have um, a little over 300 of our 360 <coughs> teachers that are actually GLAD trained. GLAD is absolutely 100% aligned with the Common Core. Um, during the, we've had another cohort, we've had um, follow-up sessions during the school year. We also have now 17 GLAD lead teachers called gladiators who will be working <laughs> with teachers in the follow-up sessions to facilitate lesson planning and um, grade level collaboration with sub-release. Um, and we have, I believe, about 16 of those days scheduled. We also have a GLAD university that we're going to be having in August, which will be kind of like the Tech University Day, where it opens up with a general session, an hour, with our trainer, Nofshaba. And she goes over the alignment of how GLAD is Common Core, just to make sure that people are getting the idea that this is very, very much aligned. It isn't separate from Common Core. It is Common Core. And then the gladiators will have breakout sessions that um, teachers can go to, and that is um, the compensation. We're also having a rally um, institute, which is going to be very much the same thing. Teachers who have been trained in rally can go for a day, and there will be a, an overview session, and then our rally lead teachers will be leading professional development sessions, breakout sessions, <coughs> according to people's needs. There will be a menu of things they can do. <coughs> so, and then of course the big one, we have the California Math and Science Partnership Grant, which is Common Core Math with Technology Infused. It's a STEM grant, so it's also teaching and learning with technology. But there is a four-day math institute um, that the participating teachers will go to. Right now we have 110. So that is 30 hours of Common Core math training, very specific. So though there is technology, it includes assessment. And then for our buyback day this year, that's before school. <coughs> we will have training for um, instructional aids and some um, other positions. Our teachers who are going to be teaching interventions will have training also before school starts with compensation. They also will have um, scheduled some sub-relief time if they can't make those days. For our buyback days this year, we are, we have listened to teachers and math trainings don't work because your needs are all over the spectrum. And it's time for some personalized, differentiated professional development. So our October, uh, September 12th and our October 17th professional development days will have 
specific sessions that you can go to. Some will be all day. Some, um, the math grant, they have to do 30 hours of professional development after the summer. And so both of the, they will have uh, trainings on both of our buyback days for the math grant that is, of course, Common Core. And then we have, again, more rally follow-up and more um, lab follow-up. There will be more tests. But in addition to some other things, we have some tools out there that are definitely underutilized. Um, and teachers really haven't had the opportunity to attend a training, such as Accelerated Reader. We have Accelerated Reader, and I think that it would really assist our level of implementation if we, novel idea, offer teachers some training sessions to go to. So our very own Daniel Lee, has volunteered to do uh, like a morning session and an afternoon session on Accelerated Reader. Another such item is ORS. We have the online uh, assessment and reporting system. It has a wealth, uh, it's, a, it's a wonderful tool for teachers. And teachers kind of go in and they look and they find things and they discover. Some people do like databases and they, they um, have learned to navigate it. But some of our teachers might like to have the training on how to use ORS how to build with ORS the Common Core Inspect assessments which are on there, which your students can take online. There's lots of tools out there that we need to do a better job in providing teachers with training so that they can tap into them. We, so. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay. Boring. And in terms of technology, um, we have just um, concluded three days of Tech University, and so Tech University was a differentiated, um, flexible uh, staff development <coughs> time that was held at Baranda Meadows for certificated staff. It was the 16th, 17th, and 18th, 
half days, also compensated. And we had approximately um, 85 to 90 um, staff members over the three days. It was <coughs> a, it was a um, you know, people could attend one day or two days or three days uh, as they chose. We had our own technology lead teachers from our school sites conducting the sessions. We had uh, sessions, myself, <coughs> I conducted sessions, so did Nick. Um, and so we had uh, that format of Tech U um, where staff could uh, participate in <coughs> some new um, ideas for integrating technology in, in Common Core into their instruction, and then some refreshers. Um, like myself, I did a, a session on uh, email and student email. Um, so those are some of the ideas that we're working on bringing to teachers and gaining, uh, having them gain some understanding of how those tools might work for them. And um, in all, uh, there was approximately 350 uh, different uh, members attending over the three days. Some were, again, the same folks, but di attending different uh, sessions um, during those three days. So that's um, one part that's uh, tied to Common Core. A second <coughs> is um, the tr training that Nick is conducting on the MacBook Airs. Um, the MacBook Airs are vastly different in terms of their power, uh, in terms of the, the capabilities than our uh, eight or nine year old MacBook laptops. And I must say, they connect the same way that the white MacBook laptops did to the projector. So um, all of our staff has had those in place in their classroom. And so Nick is, is reviewing that. Uh, he is also actually, those staff that come through the sessions, he is also um, assisting them as with our, um, we have four other uh, st staff of the IT staff who are also assisting. We're keeping the, the sessions at 10 members, 10, 10 people per session. So there's lots of hands-on help. And um, he's also uh, leading them to take advantage of the OARS uh, new gradebook that OARS is, is, is uh, piloting this summer and plans to put in place. So he's actually helping those staff to actually sign up for the trial period for that fourth grade book, and um, with the hopes that that um, it becomes a robust grade book program for all of our teachers, since we are already highly invested in ORS and have our data there. Um, so uh, those sessions, because right now they're voluntary, we will review those um, skills at the. Um, uh, the sub-release time days that we start to do in August and September for all the school sites. So we will have those, um, you know, those skills in place. We'll have teachers with sub-release time to attend those technology sessions for the MacBook Air. And in addition to not just the MacBook Air, but we're also going to be doing the digital citizenship training during those sub-release days. So there will be twofold. Um, uh, uh, you know, uh, goals for for that for those trainings. So that digital citizenship is upfront, and it is at the start of the school year. And there will be training to um, for teachers to, to gain an awareness of what is the curriculum, what the resources are that already exist, um, with the uh, common sense media, and the lesson plans that are already done. The, the preparations that are there, it's just about gaining an understanding and then being able to deliver uh, a minimum of one of those lessons dur during the school year. So, um, and then supporting the math grant with technology and doing the, the technology portion of, of training we met today um, with the, the leads for that and um, we'll be implementing um, support for that We'll also be doing professional development for kinder and first grade teachers with sub-release time for iPads and Apple TV. So we, we have yet to implement that as part of the Common Core implementation for kinder and first grade. So, okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Ms. Clark? 
I just wanted to say thank you very much for updating it. I, went, I thought it was really important that everybody knew all the great things that Seth's doing and the procurement end of it as well and all the work you're doing trying to get all those computers bought now. Thank you. Mr. Kim. Yes, I, I, I too am very impressed with the job that staff has been doing and um, the long hours they've been putting in. And uh, it's, very, it's very impressive. And uh, uh, I'd like to say that I'm very glad to be here and thank you all for coming. Thank you, sir. I was given the privilege of at least summarizing some of the things that we've heard. Uh, Dr. Lusa, uh, and, and my colleagues and, and staff, I just want to let you know that I attended the uh, UTech activity as well as summer school activity this summer. And the faculty, the support staff, the students, uh, were very proactive in learning and at the same time sharing with each other what they were learning, especially the faculty when they sat, uh, sat down after the bigger part of the program ended. Uh, these came together and reflected the experience base. They reflected what they learned, they also reflected what other people were learning, and at the same time reflecting and sharing with each other ideas on how to improve. This is a dedicated faculty in this district, and when they sit down and reflect on how to improve with where they've been, then we got something going. And, it, and I want to congratulate all the teachers who are here, and let them know too that this is extended by me to you in the classroom as well as outside the classroom. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, for the next item, for the next item. Uh, I uh, want to uh, listen, we want to listen to the reply to previous uh, concerns and also the questions that, that came up uh, last meeting. Yeah, uh, yes, Mr. President, uh, last uh, meeting there was a request from Trustee Kaufman regarding the survey. How satisfied are you in the school district? So. A few hours ago, uh, Lydia gave me copies, so I'm going to give you, uh, plus these uh, members, a copy, a hard copy, but it's going to be, we're going to put it online, Lydia, for everybody else to see how we're going to do that. Yes, yeah, this public information is a good, uh, in summary, I can tell you, is uh, we received, even last week, 30% uh, of the survey that we sent to the entire district. So not not that bad. Over two to three hundred survey they return. And again, like previous years, the number one question, how satisfied are you working in this school district? And I'm happy to say yes, over seventy percent. This is a good place to be. And I was very pleased to see what you said. How satisfied are you with the board? over 50% they are satisfied. And there's like more than 50 questions, so you would see when to see the information. How satisfied are you with the superintendent? I got 44 here um, satisfied, and I got 45% not satisfied. So I'm right there in the middle, I guess, so far. So.
who have opinions at the same time, who have um, Nazis that can contribute. But at the same time, if we're applauding, it's fine, but let's do it after we finish. Okay? And this is your podium. Uh, please move forward. Your name, please. Nuevamente, buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Cristina Mejía. Once again, good afternoon. My name is Cristina Mejía. Estoy para pedirles a ustedes la mesa directiva um, que esfuercen el trabajo del doctor Rusa que ya hizo esta decisión. And I'm here to ask the board members to enforce the decision that Dr. Rusa has already made. La respeten y la apoyen. To respect it and support it. Nuestros hijos no avanzan con una directora que no tiene programas para los niños. Our children don't advance with the principal who doesn't have programs for the children. Que mejoran la lectura de los niños. That improves the student's reading level. Para los niños que no, no hablan todavía en inglés. For students who haven't mastered English. Es todo y por favor respeten. Ya una decisión ya se hizo y no es un juego. Yo pienso que ya tienen antes un previo chequeo de la persona si ya se hizo la decisión no está que no so please respect it um, the decision has been made and I'm sure that there was a background to it so please respect the decision that has been made thank you thank you very much um, the court, our next speaker I, I'd like to introduce he, he's a colleague of ours uh, would you give him your name please and I'll tell him why Okay, my name's uh, Bill Critton. I'm a hard, hard no, I'm a hard now cause trustee. That's what. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, 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 uh, the idea is to have welcome you to our meeting at the same time recognizing you not only as a school a college board member, but also a colleague of ours who has vested interest in the sense of what's going to happen to the future of Hartnell if we don't get qualified students there. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, 
Dr. Lisa, um, fellow board <laughs> members. I'm, I'm here tonight um, and I, I respectfully disagree with your decision to remove um, the principal from Mission Park. Uh, it, it, it appears to me that uh, the students liked her, that the people uh, wanted her to stay there. And as a trustee of a community college district for 11 years, um, I have always voted with the superintendent. And um, I, I believe that there's got to be some way where you could bring that person back because I think we're all elected to do good for the community and that the people that one good thing for their, their children and, and the students of this district want to best for everyone, for the vast majority of the people of this district. And I think that that would be to bring that person back to Mission Park. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next, please. Okay, I'm Rosie Hatches. I'm still an employee of the district <laughs> um, and a member of the California School Employees Association. On behalf of Joe Sanchez, president and employee of Monterey Park Schools, Trini Mendoza, vice, first vice president who works at Natividad School, Griselda Ortiz, second vice president who works at Cammon School, Anna Mendoza, secretary who works at Monterey Park School and Los Padres Schools, Samantha Richmond, our communications officer who works at Sherwood School and Cameron School. We would like to thank Dr. Lusa and his team for the leadership that they have provided throughout the year in handling the various concerns that have come up from the employees and that they have all been handled well. Uh, we appreciate Pat Willingham working with us and as well as the whole team. At this time, we would like to thank the board and the administration for all of the work that they have done this year. We especially want to let you know that we are a group. We are CSEA, and we strongly support the decisions that this board has made on behalf of these officers we support. Thank you. Thank you. Next, please. Thank you. Uh, yes, sir. Hi, uh, my name is Trey Garden. My kids go to Mission Park. Uh, you heard from me a couple weeks ago. Um, you really do spend a lot of time extolling the positive things that your staff does, and that's great. Uh, you have a lot of great teachers. They, they make you guys look good, so I'm glad you guys are doing that finally. Uh, I actually have three separate things I want to talk about tonight, so I'm going to try to do my best to use my time wisely here. Uh, two weeks ago when you fired Mrs. Greenlee and Ms. Lewington, that's exactly what you did. You fired them as principals. Uh, I sat through that entire trustee meeting for six hours. Now, right around 7.45, we saw you exit the room through that door, and um, you convened for closed session. Now, we actually have an eyewitness who came forward afterward and saw this gentleman here. Actually, I don't even think I need to hold the picture up because he's sitting right there. <laughs> Mr. Bob Lee, um, who gained access to that door and... We don't know what was said behind closed doors, so it just yeah. seems really suspicious uh, while you were really Never all, all deliberating. Well, we saw we have a person who saw you go in there twice, so uh, we don't know who we talked to, and um, you know, I, the big question in my mind was why he would be allowed unfettered access to the same area as a closed session room where you're all deliberating. I believe that he was organized to be there and speak out on behalf of uh, uh, Dr. Luza and and the uh, recommendations that were being put forward that night. Now, second, Trustee Barnes, two weeks ago you said your lawyer saw no conflict of interest in you uh, taking action to fire your former bosses. Um, I still say there is. You know, if you're going to rely on the erroneous advice from a district lawyer, then we have contacted the California Fair Political Practices Commission to investigate your conduct. Uh, here's a copy of the complaint form that we filed today, and uh, in the interest of time, I'll just read a portion of it. The fact is, one of the five trustees shared personal information concerning Greenlee and Lewington that was not obtained during the course of the June 9th uh, trustee meeting. We believe it was Ms. Barnes. Um, it was, none of this information was shared on the record. It was not supported by any reliable evidence, whether testimonial or documentary, 
in nature, but was nevertheless relied on by other trustees to render a vote that negatively impacted Greenlee's and Millington's employment status. Although the trustees were provided with concrete and reliable evidence that negated every contention offered by the superintendent as a basis for the demotions, thus warranting a vote of no confidence as to those recommendations, the decision to demote was nevertheless passed by a majority vote on the strength of personal information offered by one particular trustee that disparaged the qualifications of the affected principals. That creates the unfortunate impression that a particular member of the board had a personal vendetta against Greenlee and Lewington and potentially misused or abused his or her position of authority to carry out that vendetta. Thank you very much. May I have one more minute? My time's not done. <laughs> no, no, I'm not done. I'm sorry, may I have one more minute? No, we have seven seconds. Well, okay. You know, I, yeah, we have people waiting in line also for three minutes. I did notice last week that you granted additional time to Marguerite Santa Cruz and Sonia Lee, and they had anti Greenlee messages. I'm asking for consideration for one more minute. Thank you very much. Thanks, right. Lee. Can you take the rest of them? As I said before, with a lot of respect, let's give people three minutes. We're really happy with the 20 minute uh, limit that I've put on. And uh, we need to take care of business. So thank you very much. Your name, please. Cynthia Schaefer. I have a lot to say, a lot more than three minutes. So I'm going to ask one question because I've sent emails to all of you. Mr. Hoffman is the only one I receive a reply back from. And I'm going to call you out, call you out again, Ms. Barnes, because you are the Area 4 representative. And I'd like to know from you why you do not answer my emails. Why do you not answer my questions? Okay.